Guten Morgen, Katze. Hey, how's it going? Look at the hydraulic fluid cooler here. I mean, that's a thick boy. That's just to cool the hydraulic fluid. That's what bales the hay. The baler. One, two, three, four, five of these electric motors. Let's see if we can see here. 184 amps, up to 210 amps. Oh, okay, 60 hertz. 60 hertz is 184 amps. At 1700 RPM, at 230 watts or volts, at 460 volts, it would only take 92 amps. But yeah, so 184 amps at 230, which I assume these are running 230. I don't think these could, these would be running 430, because that would be three phase. Either way, it's a lot of juice. Here's your electrical conduit. Joiners, here's your box. And those run up into a service. That's pretty hard. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. It's 480. Wow, that's pretty impressive. I would love to wire this if I was still doing electrical, but I'm not doing electrical anymore, so I do not. What's up, buddy? Good morning. Good morning. morning. Who's up there? It looks like a chicken. Oh, no, it's just a pigeon. I mean, you know. Chickens don't really fly, but there's your pitchfork in your hay. But you know. So anyway, we're in Du Bois, Idaho. Getting the container that we picked up yesterday on my venting my frustration about crappy container video. So, I'm getting loaded now. So, you wanna know something funny about modern trucks? See that exhaust pipe? Completely fake. It's just for the look. You got those two exhaust pipes, right? Check this out.
nothing. So, poser pipe, that's what I call it. Poser pipe, I'm trying to look cool. I'm a cool kid, I promise I'm a cool kid. Except for it's fake, and it is from the factory. Man, you know. I just miss, a, I miss the day when things were just real. You know, and I was born at the end of that, you know, I mean. Being born in the late 80s, you know, in the 90s is when things really kind of started to, you know, take a, take a downturn. But there are still things that were made high quality and in the right way. And in the mid-2000s is when everything just plummeted. I mean, things were already on the downturn, but they just dropped off. Anyway, don't know. I've been awake since 3 a.m. It's 6.42. I'm getting loaded now in Du Bois, Idaho. Then I gotta go to... I had to drive up here from Blackfoot. That's an hour and 15 minutes. And then I had to get fuel. I'm getting loaded. Then I gotta go, go backtrack to go to Salt Lake City drop this down at the train yard and I'm under the assumption that he wants me to come back up here and load again and then I'm parking the truck here at his house up here for the weekend so I don't know if I'm going to have time to do that but kill me and I only get paid by the day I don't get paid for my time, I don't get paid for the extra miles that I'm driving the day, which is almost 80 to 100 extra miles I'm driving today. Don't get paid for it. I get paid percentage of the load. So, talk to my old dispatcher at my old company. She told me, come back, I need you. And I said, you need me three days a week, lady. She's like, well, I know, but I need you three days a week. <laughs> I need more than that. She's like, well, you always turn down Saturdays. I used to always offer you to work Saturday, and you'd always say, no, I want a weekend and a day off in the middle of the week. She's like, you know, you, you have a day off, maybe two days off in the middle of the week, but then you refuse to work the weekend, so you kind of were doing it to yourself. And I was like... Yeah, I guess so a little bit. She's like, and I used to offer you loads to Denver, and you used to always say no. And I said, yeah, I guess you're right. So, anyway, I don't know if I'm gonna go back to Super T or not, but I'm definitely putting an end to this. This is, I make less than two hundred dollars a day, and I'm running. 14 plus hours a day. So, gotta put it into this. Um, you know, I mean, I don't mind working on a ranch or a farm, but, you know, the job description says it's a 10 hour day. It says you only have to come up here to get fuel. It doesn't even say all the way up here, it says the Hamer, which is 20 miles that way toward Salt Lake City and Idaho Falls and Blackfoot and all that. This is an extra 20 minutes north. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's 40 minutes on a turnaround, and it doesn't say anything about having to live load, which is what I'm sitting here seeing this video doing, because this takes, you know, 40 minutes to an hour. So an extra hour and 40 minutes to two hours to your day, because he's going to overload me. I'm going to pull on the scale and be 81,000 pounds. I'm going to tell him that I always tell him that he overloads me. He's going to pull it off down to 79,800. And I'm going to tell him I can't run that because with my fifth wheel slid all the way forward, I can only put 11.5 on the steer axle, so I can't take it. I need to be down to like 79 so I can play around with some weights. The old man that runs the farm... Uh, 
I pulled on the scale what three days ago was uh, seventy nine thousand six hundred, and I told him, "Listen, now you, you got to lose at least four or five hundred pounds. Like, I don't, I don't want to be over seventy nine two." He says, "What? Why?" I said, "Because I can't get there's five hundred pounds I need on my steer axle. I can't get." I was like, "And you're looking at the weight with me, not on the truck." Because I'm standing there, you know, at, at the scale reading with him in the office. And I was like, I can't have more than 34,000 pounds on a set of axles, dude. No, I'm not buying it, is what he tells me. I'm not buying it. You won't you won't get any tickets. I'm like, yeah, I'll get an overweight ticket. I can't have more than 34,000 on a set of axles, dude. No, I'm not buying it. He takes my ticket, shoves it in the machine, and punches it. Boom. On that bill. So it's set in stone. He's like, I'll pay your overweight tickets if you get one. And I've got to go past three scales. One of them in Utah. So I say, okay, you know what, dude? Whatever. He gets in his truck and tears off. So I spent another 30 minutes getting my axle set. I had a I had an appointment that I had to call and cancel for an MRI they want to do on my neck and my back for all this problems problem I'm having. So, I, I leave. The scale up here is closed. So then I get home, go to bed, wake up the next morning. The next scale I come to, closed. And I get down to the scale at, in Salt Lake City and they give me the bypass lane. So I couldn't even get a ticket to throw it in the guy's face. That's kind of the story of my life, really. It's like, you're, you're lucky, but almost wish that you weren't, just so you could prove a point to somebody, but you couldn't prove that point. So when I came up here that next day, you know, the load, he was there, and he's like, well, where's the ticket? It's like, so I lied. I told him, oh, I got pulled in the office, and they gave me a warning. And his response is, oh, well, you know, because I mean, I, I lied and said they gave me a warning. He says, well, that's just news to me because I've never heard of them harassing anybody under 80,000 pounds. And I was like, yeah, dude, it's bridge weights. You can't have more than 34,000 pounds on a set of axles, period. It's just, you know, gross weight is the only thing they're looking at, dude. They're wanting to make sure you got the weight distributed correctly. They don't want your wheel bearings catching on fire, you know, blowing tires. Yeah, frustrated me quite a bit. I don't know why I do these running monologue videos. Just start talking and don't stop. I guess anybody who knows me knows that that's kind of a common theme with with me. Start talking and can't stop. But anyway, uh, I guess I'm gonna go. Wish me luck today. And yeah, I'll talk to you later. Enjoy the sunrise. Oh. Wow.